Hi, I'm Anila here with Hammer in Hand. Today we're going to be forging a knife using a piece of spring steel. This is off an old 47 Dodge. And I'll explain to you along the way why spring steel is good for a, for a knife blade. This is a forge I made out of an old propane thing. That works pretty good. Definitely gets the job done. We got it running off of natural gas. Blower motor hooked up to it. I built an orifice down through the main chamber there. It's kind of waffled out, kind of like what you'd see if you looked at the end of a propane torch. It took a few tries messing around to get it right. Now we got a real good burn on it, so it's definitely going to do what we need to do for this. What we're doing here is we're taking a hot cutoff. We got it stuck down in that hardy hole. That's a little square hole on the top of the anvil. And we're using that to trim this piece off. Typically this would be done with like a brass mallet so you're not damaging that blade on the edge of that hot cutoff. But as long as you're careful you can see when the metal starts to split and kind of slow yourself down that way you're not damaging the edge of that blade. For this particular blade, we're going to be doing a mix between a drop point and a clip point, but kind of like with a little bit of an Ivan twist to it. And here we're just going to be flattening out the, the rest of this piece of spring steel. It's got a curve to it, being that it's off a little pickup truck. We're going to flatten that out so that we can cut it in our bandsaw to get it down to a manageable shape. So the other thing that we want to make sure of is that we've actually heated this metal all the way through so it's not too hard, that way we're not just knocking teeth off our bandsaw blade. And we're going to cut this back, cut out our thing to give us a more manageable size for working with. So now what I'm going to be doing is actually hammering out the edge of the blade to give us the uh, beginnings of the angle that this blade's going to have. From this angle here, you can see that edge there that I'm putting on it. So I'm kind of flattening that out, creating that bevel. Now what I have here, this is 
basically a hold down clamp that I've made out of an old primary chain from a Harley. And we've got a little loop here on the end. We use that to hook to the side of the anvil. We use this flat piece of steel for a pedal step on to hold it down. So down here I've got a, a bolt with a spacer on it. I can hook this on. And when I loop the chain over the top of the anvil, that'll be what actually holds our work down. We can just drop our pedal down through the side here. And you can see there when you use the pedal, you can hold your piece down. I'll use the cutoff just to give you an idea of how that works. So you step on that, now you got your hands free. You can actually work with two separate tools like a chisel and a hammer and hold your piece down with your foot. And we're going to be using that right here to basically put a flat spot down through our, our back of our blade. Now we're not going to do this like a real clean line through this. We, we're just trying to flatten that edge down so that we have to quench this, we can have a nice darkened area that stays kind of a hand forged look and give it a little bit of an old rustic mountain man kind of look and feel. I'm just removing a little more meat with our hot cutoff and the main reason for doing this is just because the closer we can get this blade to finish now, the less work we'll have to do later with grinders and files and things to get the shape that we're looking for. going to be trying to round out the back of this tang a little bit because eventually we're going to grind this all the way around even and we're going to thread it. We're going to actually use a brass bolster to screw on to, to hold our handle in place. Here we've got our tang nice and straight and we just want to try and get our antler to fit on it. This is the piece we're going to be using for the handle. So in order to do that, what we're going to have to do is drill a hole through it. We can slide it on. Because of the curve in this handler, we're going to have to drill in at it from both sides. So here I'm just marking so I know how far I've gone in, so I know how far to go in from the other side to hit our mark. I'm just blowing through it to make sure I got the hole all the way through. Now I'm just going to take a square file and shape this hole out to get it to fit that tang right. So now you can see here where I've got it marked out. This is where we're going to be taking this down to fit our handle. And this will be where we start the edge of our blade. And we're going to use our press, shop press, to stick, the, stick my maker's mark on here. And that's what this is here. And you can do this with a hammer, but I prefer to do it with a press and a piece of tool steel for our base, just because we get a, we get a lot more even press and we can get a lot more, uh, a lot more force and a lot better looking finished piece there even though it's a little hard to see here and get it into focus. You can kind of see it there. It's Ivan Isla got the little anvil on there. And here we're just going to be shaping out the, uh, the edge of the blade doing a little bit more of the mechanical finishing work. 
Trying to get that stop point looking the way we want. And so then we're going to move on to hardening. And then here I've cut out some samples out of another chunk of that piece of spring steel in that old Dodge pickup. And we're going to be using these to explain what's going on when you're hardening. Now we could really get into the science of this, but I'm going to try and keep it relatively simple. And one thing is critical temperature. I got my magnets here. And you can see it still sticks there, so we're not hot enough. We got to go back and forge with it. And as soon as you get this steel hot enough so the magnet won't stick, that's when you're at critical temperature. That's where you want it to quench. And we're just using like a canola oil here. And that's a good thin oil. You want to preheat it. You can just stick a hot piece of metal in it before you go to quench your pieces and that should warm it up good enough. Now we've hardened two of these now. And what I'm going to do is take this one and we're going to actually set the temper. So I'm grinding off that surface scale and the reason for that is so that we can see the bluing because to make this easy we're just going to use a little propane torch and you'll be able to see the bluing coming across that metal as we heat that up. And the whole idea here is to get this to the right temperature without getting too hot. When we get too hot it's going to soften it. If we don't get hot enough it'll still be brittle trying to hit like a 500 degree range and we're going to be actually watching the color in our metal to do that and when we actually go to do our blade we'll just use an oven and get a lot more even heat a lot easier and a lot more controlled but this will work fine for the sample just to show you what's going on here so this piece has been normalized this piece has been quenched but it hasn't hasn't been uh been tempered and this piece has been quenched and tempered so We'll start with our normalized piece of steel. It's just been heated. And as you can see there, it just nice and soft went ahead and bent right over for us. No problem. Next is our piece that we quenched, but we didn't actually set the temper. And this is going to be real hard. There you go. You see it snaps right off just like a piece of glass. Now, also, just to show you real quick with this piece we've got, you can do a file test to figure out how hard your, your metal is. You can hear there, the sound that that's making as it's rubbing across that, is just skating across it like a piece of glass. It's, it's not really biting into the metal at all either. You can see the edge there is clean. It's just, it's just not biting in. And that's a real hard piece of steel. Now, here's our piece that we've quenched and then we've set the temper on it and you can see it's bouncing right back. So we've got a nice hard piece of steel but we've also got the temper set so it's tough. It's not too hard. It's not brittle. And that's what we're looking for in our blade. That's the reason why spring steel works good for this. So like I said before, we're going to be using just a regular kitchen oven. This is one I just modified to kind of turn it into a shop oven. I'm just going to take a little infrared thermometer here and check our temperature and make sure that we're getting where we want. We kind of want to hit between 450 and 500 degrees. It's worked for me real good in the past. You can see they were at 467, so we're good. We're going to leave it in there for an hour, and then we're going to pull it back out, and we're going to let it air cool. Now once it's cooled down, we're going to put it back in there for another hour. We're going to do that two or three times. Here I'm just taking a 150 grit and using a file to get a nice flat edge. Using this to clean that scale off that blade after hardening that. Get it back to nice and clean looking.
All right, now we got the blade sanded along the edge, cleaned up. I'm gonna leave the top section of this uh, blackened like that from the oil quench because uh, it's kind of a rustic looking knife. That's what we're going for at this one. So, got an antler handle here. Went ahead and uh, cleaned up the tang a little more to get the fit a little better. And after filing out that antler, we've got a pretty snug fit. And so the nice thing about this is we have the benefit of having the strength of a full tang of our blade going through our handle, even though we're using an antler handle, whereas some people might just create a couple of uh, nicks or notches or hooks or something in, in a short tang and just try and epoxy it into the handle, which is not really the way I want to go. Now we're going to make ourselves a bolster. We're going to use a piece of leather there. We're going to do a bolster on the bottom. And we're going to uh, going to attach with the brass bolster on the other end. So here we've got our pieces laid out. We've got some vegetable tan leather here. This is sole leather. It's real thick from making shoe soles. Here we've got some thinner stuff, about an eight ounce. And we got our brass pieces. We're gonna use for our bolsters. There's our top section. Here's our bottom bolster. We're using a thick piece of brass there for that because we gotta thread that screw onto our tang. So we're just going to mark out our tang so we know how far to bring our threads in. Now we're just going to take digital calipers here just to measure and make sure we got this the right size. That's pretty good. We're going to be doing this at a 5 sixteenths by 24, but it really doesn't matter what size you do this. It just so happened that's the size we kind of landed on because of how big this needed to be to fit into that antler. So you can see there we've got it threaded. Now we just need to figure out where to cut it off at. So now here what I'm doing is I'm taking a piece of tape and I'm just going to mark my drill bit so I know how far to drill in with this so I don't pop right through this bolster. I'm going to use the antler here to figure out exactly where we're going to be drilling that hole so everything lines up right.
So now that we've got our top little guard made and our leather piece, we're gonna put our handle on. We've got our leather piece for our bottom section. Oh, wait a second, we're gonna need something for this. Green Loctite. This stuff doesn't come off once it goes on. And a couple of drops of that, that'll keep this from coming apart while you're using the knife. And once we thread the bolster onto the bottom, and get all the pieces lined up right, by tightening this up, it'll press everything tight into place. You see that green Loctite's already setting up on me. Alright, so... Now you've got the whole thing together, and we can finish shaping all the pieces up. And I'm going to start that by shaping the bolster. And here I'm just using a flat sanding disc just to remove the majority of the meat off of this and start to get the shape that we're looking for. So after sanding this with the file, we're going to take the DA, which is dual action sander, and we're starting with a 320 grit. And we're going to step through a few grits on this to get this sanded down, and then we're going to polish it up. And there's your finished knife. Now we did a wet polish, just with some water and a piece of wood on that leather, so that's just the natural leather there. And then we went through and polished the whole thing up, and I think it turned out pretty nice. And hopefully we gave you guys enough information on this so that you can go through and do this without giving you too much information to make it a little overwhelming. And you can get into the science of how to harden a piece of steel and and there's really a there's really a hell of a science to it, so try to keep it simple and just give you the information you need so you would be able to do this on your own. And you see here we even got a, a good feel to it, good grip and it's got a good balance to it too. All in all I think we got a, a pretty good backwoods looking knife here. Yeah, thank you for watching.